Oh, howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today I want to just talk quickly about the preview of crafting options that was made available by Grinding Gear Games today as a little teaser for 3.11 Harvest League, which is in about 10 days or so. Now, what's going to happen here is that you're going to cultivate, essentially play a mini Farmville uh, sub-game that you're going to get access to by running maps. So when you're running a map you'll find seeds, when you find seeds you can plant them, the more dangerous an area you plant them in, I think, the more the more powerful the monsters will grow up to be. And, of course, when you harvest them, they'll turn into monsters first. You'll kill those monsters, you'll loot their life force, and depending on the monsters that you kill and the specific seeds that you used in order to create them, uh, you'll get access to a number of crafting options. Uh, ultimately, life force you don't use can then be recycled for future crafts. Now, uh, having a look here, there's a little, uh, some clever people on Reddit have worked out that the degree of stylization in the upper right corner of the craft indicates what tier of seed it was linked to. So this one's believed to be from tier 3, and in fact everything on this first screen is from tier 3, whereas down here these are believed to be tier 2. Uh, now, in maps I believe you'll only get tier 1 seeds, then when you kill those monsters you'll harvest tier 2 seeds from them, and then when you kill the tier 2 seed monsters, you'll harvest tier 3 ones. All in all, I expect that you'll get access to tier 3 seeds once per 15 maps. That's my current estimate going into the league. Uh, tier 2 seeds once per 10 maps, and tier 1 seeds once per 5 maps. But I could be wrong on that. Alright, so sacrifice a map to gain 3 of a particular master mission of your choice. Notice that there's a 2 next to the Einhar one. This means that you can perform this craft twice, uh, sacrificing one map the first time, two map, uh, and a second map the second time, in order to gain 6 Einhar missions. This means that you are going to be absolutely flooded with master missions if these uh, crafts are even remotely common in the new league. Uh, I have no idea how common they'll be. Uh, I also don't know for certain exactly how the levels will work on them. Uh, I'm assuming that as 74 is uh, early in yellow maps, these have probably come from killing uh, monsters that were planted out of yellow maps. So you've, you've run yellow maps, you've looted seeds that are level 74, you've then killed the monster that's come from them, and these are going to be level 74 uh, master missions. So I do, I'm guessing that you sacrifice a white map, a yellow map, or a red map, and you get three yellow master missions of, uh, because of the tier of the seeds. But I could be wrong there. It may be that it respects the tier of the map that you sacrifice. We're just going to have to find that out in practice. Change a stack of fossils into a different type of fossil. This sort of thing that it all comes down to the weighting. Uh, I'm assuming, though, that this is going to be a quite powerful craft and it's going to put, if this is even remotely common, uh, it's going to put a really high floor under the value of whatever the least in demand fossils are in the new league. So in previous league, that's, that's been scorched fossils, it's been sometimes metallic fossils, sometimes not metallic fossils, uh, it's been aberrant fossils. Those have uh, been the ones that have had the least end user demand. Uh, I think you'll find that there'll be quite a bit of demand as people want to pick up 20 of the uh, 20 of these fossils in order to use this craft to its maximum potential. Change a stack of essences into a different type of the same tier. Uh, again, this will push up the value of deafening essences of unpopular types, uh, but I don't think it's going to set you know set them up into the sky high or anything like this. Uh, from a solo self found perspective, uh, this is going to mean that you'll have much more access to any master that you care the most about. Uh, and that you will have a use for fossils that do nothing for your build. So if you're playing a Chaos Damage build, uh, you want those Aberrant Fossils that people in the Trade League can't get rid of, and so you'll then be able to maybe use up your Frigid Fossils to gain them. Okay, uh, so here we have change a stack of oils into a different colour of oil, and given the fact that there's four of this craft, I'm assuming it may be one of the most common ones, uh, this is mostly going to be disappointing, but every now and again you're going to put in 10 azure oils and get back 10 uh, gold oils. That's going to be kind of awesome when it happens. Uh, I'm expecting that will still be very rare. For catalysts, uh, again, nothing huge, but I think the key thing here is that all of these are worth having. All of these crafts so far are worth having as options. Uh, and catalyst is not particularly important in trade leagues, but 
for, for Solo Cell Found, they're going to love that. I change a map into a random map fragments based upon its tier. So here I think you're going to want to be sacrificing tier 16 maps. Maybe not early in the league, but once you get to the middle of the league and this comes up, maybe you'll get Mortal Fragments from them, maybe you'll get Shaper Fragments, uh, Elder Guardian Fragments. Uh, all of those are upgrades from a tier 16 map. Actually, Mortal Fragments might not be, depending on the, on the trade economy. Uh, SSF players don't know what they're going to get, don't know what they're going to use this for. Change a map into random map currency based on its tier. Uh, this is probably going to be pretty disappointing. Uh, you know, get sextants, unless it can give delirium orbs. If this can give delirium orbs, this will be exciting. And change a map based into a random scarab based on its tier could be quite good. I think one of the key things that we're seeing here, and something that has allayed a lot of people's concerns about the Harvest League, is that essentially this is giving you a lot of opportunities to create your own consumables. Uh, something that a lot of people were hoping would be the case. Uh, also, a lot of these are very general, very general options, uh, things that people are going to want to use and use in some numbers. Uh, the other thing that was added today, uh, and this is moving away from talking about harvest crafting options, uh, there was also a new divination card and a change to the passive tree spoiled. Uh, let's start with the passive tree. Tribal Fury is now on the normal passive tree and it is close to Solar Steel. Tribal Fury has previously been anointment only. It is one of the most powerful nodes on the tree, but it's also one that is absolutely essential if you're playing a strike skill. Uh, strike skills target one nearby additional nearby enemy. That's half the benefit of Ancestral Call support with none of the drawbacks and none of the opportunity costs. Uh, this is an amazing node and it's gone from you must use spend your, uh, your amulet anoint on Tribal Fury as soon as possible to uh, anoint, this if, uh, anoint this or something else, uh, but if you don't anoint it, you need to take it. The wheel is really good as well too. Uh, you can choose between going melee splash area of effect or additional melee strike range. I think most people will go melee strike range, uh, but both are, both are viable options. Uh, this whole wheel is looking amazing, and like I said, it's in a great part of the passive tree as well. Uh, secondly is the Divination card, The Awakened. Uh, interestingly enough, I was considering uh, commissioning a card just like this, but with a very different theme, one about uh, Solaris and Lunaris having different ideas about crafting something together, and this sort of causing a fracture between them, and Tang Mazu, the, who's the Delirium antagonist, coming and speaking to both of them and riling them up, sort of turning this disagreement into outright discord. Anyway, uh, it looks like someone's picked me to the post and has submitted this card, The Awakened. Uh, jewelry, item level 86, double influenced item. This is going to be a lot of fun to turn in. I mentioned when talking about Prometheus's Armory, which is uh, item level 100, one-handed weapon, double influenced, that a lot of the things that come out of that are going to be undesirable bases and influence combinations, and that it would be less powerful than looting an Awakener's Orb. That still stands true for the Awakened, but less so. Uh, there will be more hits with this. Additionally, there will be a lot of vanity chancing bases that will, that will come about because of this card. So, for instance, uh, if it's possible to chance a Headhunter next league, so if Zana's Nemesis mod is available from the map device, then in that case, uh, the Awakened is going to be great every time that you hit a... Uh, double influenced uh, leather belt, especially if one of the influences is Shaper, uh, there will be a lot of demand for that just as a chance or base. Uh, in terms of other things that can come up with this, for people that are using Awakener Orbs to craft true endgame belts, they're always using one of three bases. There's a Stygian Vice, which is the default one. Uh, you use this unless you've got a very good reason not to. The second choice is a Crystal Belt. And the third choice, from a min-maxer's perspective, is a heavy belt. Uh, and that really is only the case if you're playing a strength stacking build. Otherwise, it is just crystal if you're energy shield and uh, stygian otherwise. However, with the Awakened, I think there'll be a lot of belts that come into being that are pretty good, that are almost good enough to invest serious currency rolling, but they're on different bases. So you might see, for instance, one player uh, hits a... Uh, Warlord and something else, Warlord and Elder, uh, Rustic Sash, and decides, you know what, I'm going to throw a few Chaos or a few Fossils or a few Essences at this, get something that's good but not 
not absolutely perfect. And I'm going to use that until I'm in the position to start looking for, you know, to upgrade to a 10, 12 or 20 exalt belt. And of course, for many players, this might be where they stop their gearing progression in the belt slot. So I think that's going to be interesting, just creating a lot of bases for trade leagues that you know, would otherwise just not exist because there was no incentive to ever create them. And these bases will be crafting puzzles. So for instance, what exactly do you do if you get a prismatic ring that is uh, influenced by both the Shaper and the Redeemer? What are you going to do with that? That's a crafting puzzle. Uh, some people will find a great solution. Some people will say, you know what? I'm not interested in this, I'm just going to chase the best, I'm just going to pick up a Shaper Opal Ring or an Elder Steel Ring, and that's fine too. And this card will put out a lot of second tier bases, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it in action. Anyways, that's all for today, I will be covering all of the remaining uh, information that comes out on the league, uh, but if you've got any comments or questions, fire away below, otherwise, I'm going to leave it there, hope you have a good one.